Ex-prisoners of Reddit. What was the worst thing you saw inside the prison walls? I spent six years in prison. One month and I watched a crip on crip gang stabbing. They stabbed the guy 60 plus times while he was curled up in a ball screaming help. But nobody could because you'd be a target next. He somehow survived but I couldn't tell you how. I think about it every day. Saw someone break a small branch off a tree in the yard. Dry it out in the sun. Sharpen it down to a point on the concrete and then stab a guy in the back with it four times. He had to be airlifted to hospital because it punctured his lung. English female prison. I saw a woman get held down by two others while a third woman proceeded to shove her hand up the woman's vagina to check if she had came in with a parcel. Drugs. This was in the communal shower so yeah addicts don't give a fuck. I made a friend early on who was sentenced to life for killing a man that had touched his niece. He'd been locked up for about five or six years when I'd first met him. Talked to him every day for three years and one day he comes up to me and says he needs to talk to me about something. We do a lap on the back 40 and he tells me his old lady is leaving him. And isn't bringing his daughter up to come see him anymore. He's actually crying. I didn't know what I could do to help him. So I let him cry and told him to not let it bother him. Maybe she'll come around. We go on about our day. And everything seems normal. That night he woke me up, he bunked across the hall, crying. I got up to talk to him and he says he wants to die. And that he's glad I'm up because he doesn't want to be alone. I start hitting the panic button for my cell and screaming for a guard. But no one comes. And I have to watch while he pries his mirror off of his wall. He put on his linens and blanket like a big robe and he cuts his stomach with his mirror. It was hard to see much because of the blankets and the dark. But I could smell his blood. Then he lit his blankets on fire. The co's got there when the smoke alarm went off. But they were too late. I still have nightmares about it. Screaming for him to stop. To just talk it out. But he never does. I've seen a lot of fucked up shit man. But this was probably the worst. Or, at least, it stuck with me the longest. Edit. Thanks for the hugs and support everyone. Makes how I feel after sharing hurt a little less. I appreciate it. I turned six months into three years of juvie time. While not really bad, this one kid supposedly fell in the shower and hit his head. Not sure if it was a planned ruse. But after he came back from the hospital he suddenly forgot how to talk and lost his memory. He'd communicate with whimpers. This went on for a few weeks. Every month you'd go in for evaluation and your remaining time and your progress would be reviewed. I'm assuming he thought this act would get him sent home. The staff eventually grew tired of it and in his review. Told him since he didn't remember anything then he'd have to do all off his time again because he obviously hadn't learned anything to be rehabilitated. His memory miraculously returned that day. Edit. Holy shit. Thanks for the arrows and awards. Second edit of how six months turned into three years. I went in for burglary at 16. The sentence was a six month program. Kinda like a boys summer camp in the middle of the woods. They had a point system where you'd start with 650 points at the beginning of the week. You'd earn or lose points based on your behavior. You'd gain points for doing chores and behaving or lose them by fighting and other stupid stuff. Above 650 points was a positive week and you'd get candy and extra privileges like movie night and field trips. Less than 650 was negative. So throughout your sentence they kept track. If you didn't have enough positive weeks when you went to your review. You'd get more time. My home life sucked and I wound up having fun hanging out with other boys and finally being able to be a kid. The food was good. I was smart and maxed out the placement tests so didn't really have to do schoolwork. Ended up doing enough stupid shit to wind up at the first program a year. After a year you go back to the juvenile detention center and they reassess your needs and send you to another program as they can keep you until 18 if they want as I didn't catch another charge just didn't think I was rehabilitated. I spent another year at another program. Same kind of shit. But pushed a staff member. Caught a charge. And got sent to adult jail because I just turned 18. Spent a year in the county and was free after. I spent 8 years in prison. In the state of Georgia. There was a guy who made a hustle of holding a hiding illegal cell phones for the Mexican gangs. When a shakedown, search occurred. This man was responsible for the loss of many of those cell phones. He was confronted on the yard. And tried to escape by climbing the fence. He got stuck in the razor wire. Shredding his forearms. 
while seven or eight Mexican gang members were stabbing him all in the back of his legs and his ass. I remember people kinda turned on each other out of boredom. I mean, you made friends and all. But you had it hanging over you that you were a bad guy. And some people took to being assholes and provoked others seemingly out of boredom. It was an unpleasant situation to be on the other side. Because you wanted to stay out of trouble too. But at the same time had to stand up for yourself. Maybe not the absolute worst I saw. But something I remember. It's not the craziest thing I saw, but it's a social norm in prison that goes on daily. I'll never forget how socially acceptable, jackers, were. Like somebody would be wearing a coat or hoodie etc and stare at a female C. Oh. And jack off. Sometimes sitting on a bench. Sometime the TV room. And nobody bats an eye. One time a dude was like, Hey man can you move a row over? She know I'm watching, and didn't skip a beat cranking off to an ugly 60 something year old woman. It's fucked up but after a while you just accept that some people went nuts in there. Done 11 years myself. One of the worst things I've seen is two members of a gang called Goodfellas, aka 40 Deep, jumped on a blood on the way back from pill call. One used a large knife. The other had a fan motor in a net bag and used that as a flail. Also seen, heard multiple people being raped. A friend of mine admitted to me after a year or so that he had been actively raped every night by his roommate, OOOG from the Bloods, for about a five month period. There's more just what I could think of ATM. Edit. I just looked back at this from a long time and holy shit on the upvotes and awards. So thanks. I guess? Not prison but jail. Six months pregnant and her water broke. Cuz didn't believe her and waited to take her to the hospital until she was hemorrhaging. The baby died and the woman was released because they didn't want to pay medical costs. This was 2004-ish. While not prison and certainly tame by comparison. The worst thing I saw in jail was refusal to allow people to use the restroom. We, six tilde of us, were all waiting 12 hours for processing in a small town in NC and were put in a concrete cell with a toilet. Every time we stood up to use the toilet, an officer would yell at us to sit back down. For those who disobeyed, they were forcibly handcuffed and moved somewhere else often pissing themselves during the ordeal. Editing to add some detail and hopefully answer some questions I've seen in the comments I was a first year in college going to Campbell University. I was arrested and taken to the Harnett County Jail where I was eventually served an ex-party restraining order. That order was thrown out less than a month later. But charges pending existed on my record for years after until I could get it expunged which cost me quite a few jobs. There was talk about a guy assaulting his own daughter. Some guys made him a cup of morning coffee. Morning coffee is basically taking a kettle. Pour cooking oil in it. Heat it up and add a lot of sugar and then throw it in someone's face. It was very uncomfortable to see and hear. Edit. Whoa. First comment to really blow up like this. Edit 2 10k upvotes? Holy fuck. I never thought a day would come where I came home to that. Thanks for the award strangers. Although I must admit that I have mixed feelings about those helpful ones. Not a prisoner but worked in a prison clinic for a few weeks while in med school. Was under the mentorship of the prison GP. Had this one guy come into the clinic for a routine visit who had a colostomy. We did our physical. Blah blah. And the guy was about to leave. The GP mentoring me said. Hey. Check out his colostomy real quick. The guy awkwardly peeled part of his bag off and he has these red blisters weeping fluid around his colostomy stoma. I was totally confused and the guy left super quick. GP just shrugged. Later that day. I asked the GP what was up. Apparently the other prisoners fucked that guy's colostomy hole. And he had gotten herpes of the colostomy from the other prisoners. Haunts me to this day. Seeing someone on the threes jump to his death. Just missing PPL on the deck. Not exactly prison but how about being laughed at when asked to show a guard that your molar just broke in half with one part in your hand and the other profusely bleeding. I'll ask the dentist for an emergency visit. Paperwork came back for a visit in 6 months. Fuck Fresno County Jail. Dudes thinking no one notices their bedsheets ruffling during lights out. Saw a dude get his face turned to hamburger over a card game. Dude lost so he sucker punches the guy scross from him a minute later. Gets in top of him. And probably get about 10 hits in by the time the CO broke it up. 
blood everywhere I was like holy fuck. It was like my first month there and it made me kinda not wanna leave the cell. My bunkie was a blood and jacked he's like dude nobody will fuck with you I am like okay I hope not. I'm pretty sure he smashed his eye socket in. Edit holy shit I didn't expect this many upvotes lol. My uncle was in for 17 years for marijuana related charges. He was in a ward with two other guys with the same name as him. Both of them in for 7 years. One of them killed a guy and the other was a child molester. One day when my uncle was in the showers. A group of guys who mistaken him as a child molester were about to serve prison justice on the wrong guy. He quickly realized the situation. Sprinted naked out the showers to grab his papers to show the guys they have the wrong dude. Cool story. I was a small time criminal in my youth. Got locked up for some weed for the weekend. I never experienced much kindness that I could remember from people but I did in jail. I couldn't use the bathroom in my cell because I was too scared and these guys started talking to me and distracting me so I could go. It was the strangest and coolest thing I'd ever seen. Been intrigued by behavior ever since. Coworker of mine here in Delaware during a riot got his teeth stomped in and while he lay there bleeding some of the dudes on death row surrounded a female guard and protected her from all the other dudes who wanted to rape her. Honor among thieves how about it? They actually got their sentences reduced I believe. Not the worst but I hope it's uplifting. Edit. I should have said the dudes who had life not death row my bad. I worked in the medical department of a large prison in Florida. We had an inmate bite a bigger inmate's nose off. The tip. The bigger guy kept asking the kid for sex and the kid had enough. We saw several stabbings. Several were life flighted out. But those weren't the most interesting. We had an inmate smoke some bad spice. Made out of God knows what. He came to medical out of his mind and later died because it caused brain hemorrhaging. One guy got a dislocated patella and was just sitting patiently as I got his info. I asked if it hurt and he said yeah. I asked how he was so chill and he replied. Because I'm not a bitch. Saw this in a similar post. Some guy was doing a two year stretch for something. Anyway he was laying awake his first night when he heard the microwave. He didn't think much of it and ignored it. Then a few minutes later he hears this blood curdling scream. Apparently the guy using the microwave heated up a tub of Vaseline to boiling point then he pours it on some guy's face. I think it was revenge for the guy talking smack about him. I did three years inside Hump Belmarsh. When I was 18. Having just transferred out of Yoy Cook Hump Wood. I was in for a non-violent but serious offense. So I was put on HB1 with all the lifers. I saw a lot of shit go sideways quickly there. Dudes having heads cracked in with pool balls out of nowhere in the lunch queue. But that all became pretty commonplace. What I will never forget is the feeling of surprise as three guys push past me on the stairs. And wonder what the hurry was. Then watching them all barrel into a single cell. Still not sure what was going on. The screams that came from that room were horrific. It turns out they held down the guy, a big dude too, on his bed. Threw boiling water on him and repeatedly stabbed him. We all heard the screams but no one would alert a guard. It isnt done. Then. From my spot on the stairs next to the cell. I watched a guard walk over. His name was Mr. Gbad. He saw what was going on through the window in the door. And turned around and walked off. Cunt doesn't describe him well enough. Edit. Because some people seem to be defending him. Let me tell you what happened after. The guys ran off upstairs and flushed or chucked their razors and bloodstained clothes. Because Mr. Gbad didn't get close enough to ID anyone. They got nothing other than being put on basic. If he had opened the door they could have been positively ID'd. If the CCTV worked on the wing. They could have been ID'd. Mr. Gbad was one person in a string of safeguarding failures. Doesn't mean he ISNT at fault too. Saw a lot of bad things. Like the usual fights. Couple people dying and such. One of the most fucked up things I saw was what the guards did to this one inmate. I was in maximum security. And then there is a supermax segment of that which is all tiny single cells to hold the murderers. High profile cases. And complete nut jobs that are too dangerous for general population. So I was a trustee doing my rounds handing out lunch to the single cells. This one guy demands an extra sandwich from me. I tell him it's not happening BC I don't have extra. And he starts throwing stuff including who knows what liquid on me. Well the guard sees this. 
and I was cool with them BCI never acted up or anything. Then he gets on his radio. And calls for their special response team. Maybe one to two minutes max. Twelve dudes in full riot gear coming walk down the hall marching and banging their clubs on their shields like something out of a movie. They let me stand there for some reason. All twelve of them somehow fit into the six by ten cell. And just beat the living shit out of this guy. The guard tells me he will handle the rest of handing out lunch. I get back to my cell near the indoor guard office. And about five minutes later they bring this battered dude down. They have what's called a restraining chair. Which straps your ankles. Legs. Waist. Wrists. Head and neck all down. The guy gets promptly put into it. And then rolled outside to the yard about 50 feet away. Promptly gets maced. It was 36 degrees that night. But they apparently have a rule that they can keep you out there as long as it doesn't hit freezing. They left this guy out there for a solid 12 hours with no food, water and barely any clothes. I saw him again 4 to 5 days later after he got out of the hospital, medical. One eye swollen shut. The other barely opened. And beaten beyond recognition. He called me over to his cell and apologized. Appreciate the guards looking out for me. But I felt a bit bad for what they did to him. I've never been to prison but my cousin did and he came back out all sorts of messed up. He was arrested for drugs. According to him he spent the majority of his time in solitary confinement. For his safety. He said that his first couple of months there were okay. As far as prison goes. But that one day. For whatever reason some guy who had been kept separate from the general population was accidentally put with the rest of the prisoners unsupervised and that a few prisoners grabbed the guy and that they stomped on his elbows and legs to break them before they sodomized him with some shivs. My cousin said it that those guys did it all in an instant and that they threatened him if he snitched. My cousin was later interviewed by some of the guards before they took the guys who did this and so some thought that he had snitched. He says that he didn't. But that didn't matter because the guards had put him in solitary for safety and was eventually kept there for months longer. Because he wouldn't snitch so they tried to accuse him of being an accomplice. Also. Thank you for the silver. As a corrections officer. I've responded to. And in some cases prevented. Suicides typically by hanging but sometimes cutting wrists. Stabbing and beatings take place. Of course. There is always someone angry at someone. Fighting and bloody attacks at my facility were about once per week. Rape is less common than movies suggest. But there is very likely a sex for service trade going on somewhere and every few months, two to three times a year, an inmate would use the tip line to report sexual abuse by another inmate. I told this story last year when this exact question was asked here. So here is the retelling. I spent a couple weeks in county jail. On the first day, when we were all being processed into the facility, strip, bend over, spread your cheeks, and cough. We were told very succinctly to never ever even joke about suicide while in the facility. Kinda like how you just don't say bomb on an airplane anymore. By day 3. I had a good understanding of the other guys I was locked up with. I was physically the biggest of the white guys in our pod so all the white kids huddled around my table at meals to keep away from the Hispanic folks and the black folks, yes. There are three teams in correctional facilities whether you like it or not. There was one kid in the group that seemed underdeveloped mentally. He probably had a learning disability among other things. But he essentially acted like a 12-year-old. I knew early on he was going to get himself in trouble because he never stopped talking or moving. And he was rubbing everyone the wrong way. I tried to tell him to chill out and be invisible. But he was not understanding what I was telling him. I had been there a week. When the 12-year-old finally lost his cool completely. He was in the shower singing and joking around putting on a performance that went too far and he pooped on the floor as a joke after the other guys in the shower grabbed their towels and ran he proceeded to kick the poop all over the walls and into the other shower stalls i didn't shower for the rest of my stay truth be told it turned into a big scene and then when the trustees came in to clean up the poop all over the walls it turned into an even bigger scene the whole time the 12 year old was locked in a cell near the showers laughing and joking as other inmates had to clean up his poop and make the shower area sanitary again state-run facilities have standards after all the next day everyone was looking at the 12 year old with hate in their eyes kinda like gomer pile in full metal jacket everyone missed their showers the day prior due to the poopsident 
And then the kid was still up to his antics at breakfast the next day. Everyone got really cold toward him. Even openly mean. I'll admit. I started ignoring him completely after the poop. It took him a day or two to realize he was hated by all. And then his personality changed dramatically. He became sad, despondent, and started talking to the COs because the other inmates wouldn't talk to him anymore. He fucked up, and told the COs that he should just harm himself and make everyone happy. And that was all it took. They dragged out the blue burrito. This is the scariest thing I had seen in jail. The blue burrito was a 10 foot long blue foam mat. Like you would use in gym class with two 12 foot long red belts attached. They laid it out on the floor. Forced the 12 year old to lay on the mat. And then they rolled him up with his arms at his sides into the blue burrito. The two long red belts clipped together at the top and bottom of the burrito keeping it all nice and tight. This was the suicide protocol at the jail. No counseling. No medical ward. You lose the ability to move. They put that poor bastard in the burrito around 8 p.m. Dragged him into his cell and left him laying on the floor. Wrapped up tight. Until breakfast the next morning. Around 8 a.m., the child molesters and gang members in protective custody get to eat breakfast first. Imagine being unable to move. Barely able to breath. With no end in sight for 12 hours on the floor of your 8x8 eight eight cell. My cell was up above his. And I heard him weeping and moaning in agony all night. He didn't say a word to anyone. Or look anyone in the eye for that matter for the rest of the time I was there. One night in the blue burrito broke him. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to drop a like. If you would like to see more content like this in the future. Subscribe and turn on notifications to be notified about future videos. Now check out one of these interesting videos.